so this is the first uh, lesson in the rational numbers unit. Um, we're just comparing and evaluating rational numbers today, so this is a bit of an introduction lesson. Um, first of all, we have to define what a rational number is, because that's what we're going to be working with in this unit. Um, a rational number is any number that is positive or negative that can be written as a fraction. There are some numbers that cannot be written as fractions, and we're going to talk about those later. Um, but <clears throat> for now, we're going to stick what, with what a rational number is. Any number that can be written as a fraction. Um, so example, you know, uh, 1 over 4 is a rational number. Um, you could write that number as 0 0.25 as a decimal. You could write that number as a percent. Um, any number that is any decimal, if you're looking at a decimal, any decimal that has a repeating pattern or a decimal that terminates, like stops, can be written as a fraction. So a really common repeating decimal we see all the time is 0 0.3 repeating, 0 0.333333, and so on to infinity. That would be equal to 1 third. So since that can be written as a fraction, um, it is called rational. So any decimal number that has a pattern or any decimal that stops, um, like 0 0.25, those can all be written as fractions. Okay, uh, example one, we are going to compare some rational numbers and they're written in different formats. We have some um, decimals and some fractions. We're first going to do this just by estimating and thinking and reasoning and then we're going to do it using a calculator um, to check our answers. Okay, so first, first off I noticed that some of these numbers are negative and some of them are positive. Let's compare the positive numbers first. So these are the two positive numbers. Seven, eight, 7 out of 8 is closer to 1 um, compared to 4 over 5. When the denominator is larger, um, so we're only 1 eighth away from <clears throat> 1 with 7 over 8, but we're 1 fifth away from 1 with 4 over 5. So this is the largest number in the list and four-fifths is the second largest. Okay, now let's look at the negative numbers. Um, let's compare, uh, so I know that negative 1.2 is the smallest or the least because it's the only number less than negative one. Less than negative 1. Negative 0 0.4 repeating and negative 5 over 8, those are both greater than negative 1. Um, so we've now done, we've now ordered these three. We now need to just look at these two. And I'm going to think of like the benchmark negative 0 0.5 or negative 1 half. Negative 0 0.4 repeating is larger than negative 0 0.5. It's larger than negative half. Um, and then negative 5 over 8, 4 over 8 would be 1 half. So 5 over 8 is a little bit smaller because it's negative smaller than negative 0 0.5. So we have our final order. So the very smallest, as we said, was negative 1.2. And then comes negative 5 over 8, which we said was smaller than negative 0.5. And then we have negative 0 0.4 repeating. And then we have um, 4 over 5. And then we have a 7 over 8. So we've ordered them just um, without using a calculator. Okay, if we do have access to a calculator, we can check our work by um, converting all of these numbers into decimals so that we can compare them all. Um, so negative 1.2 is already a decimal. We'll leave that alone. 4 over 5 is the same as 4 divided by 5, which is 0 
7 over 8 is the same as 7 divided by 8, which is 0 0.875. And right away we can tell here that we were right. 7 over 8 is larger than 4 over 5. I'm just going to underline all my numbers. Then we have negative 0 0.4 repeating, which is already a decimal. And then we have negative 5 over 8, which is the same as negative 5 divided by 8, which is equal to negative 0 0.625. Okay, and in that way we can see our order was correct um, from before, because uh, we can order them just using the decimals. Okay, um, next question. Which fraction is greater, negative 3 over 4 or negative 2 over 3? Do this in two ways, one with a calculator, one without. Okay, so immediately I think of my benchmark of negative 1. And I know that negative 3 over 4, because the denominator is larger, is closer to negative 1 compared to... Two thirds, negative two thirds. Um, so I know that uh, since negative one is closer to negative three over four, that means negative three over four is less than negative two thirds. If I were going to do this on a number line, if you like that kind of visual, it would look something like this. Here's zero. Here's negative one. So this would be negative one half. Here's negative 3 over 4. So that's where negative 3 over 4 is sitting. And then negative 2 thirds would be around here. Okay. Uh, using a calculator, what you could do to check your work is just convert them to decimals because it's easier to compare that way. That's the advantage of decimals is it makes things numbers easier to compare. That's why we often use them. Um, so we have negative 0 0.75 versus negative 0 0.6 repeating or negative 0 0.6666666, right? And we can see by looking at them, negative 0 0.5 is, or 0 0.75 is smaller. or I should say is less than negative 0 0.6 repeating. Okay, so we were correct. All right, next question. Identify a fraction between negative 0 0.7 and negative 0 0.8. This is a good little review of how to convert um, decimal numbers into fractions. So if we want to be between negative 7 and negative, negative 0.7 and negative 0.8, we have to um, add in a hundredth position into our decimal. So I could choose many numbers. I could choose negative 0 0.71, negative 0 0.72. I could also even put in an extra thousandth if I wanted to, but I'm not going to here. You could choose any of these. You can keep going all the way up to negative 0 0.79. And let me show you how to change these into decimal or fraction numbers. All you want to do to change these into fractions, just as a review, is you count the number of positions after the decimal place. So here we have two. And so we want to make our fraction out of 100 with two zeros. And then you simply just write the number, so negative 7, 1, without any decimals in the numerator. So you'd read this as negative 71 hundredths. This number would also be out of 100. They would all be out of 100 because they all have two spots after the decimal place. And this would be negative 72 out of 100. This would be negative 73 out of 100. And this would be negative 74 out of 100. If you make one, if you want to write a number that has a thousandths position, like let's say 751, then because there's three numbers after the decimal place, we would write our fraction with three zeros. One, two, three. And then you just simply write the number negative 751. Um, so all of those would be options there. There's an infinite number of, of decimal numbers you could write down. Okay, and finally, let's talk about which of these, let's classify rational numbers. Let's figure out 
which of these numbers here are rational numbers and which ones are not. Um, because I mentioned at the beginning of the lesson that some numbers actually cannot be written as a fraction. Okay, so first one here, square root. So square root is asking um, like what times what it has to be the same number equals nine. So since three times three equals nine, the square root of nine is three. And three can be written as a rational number because it is technically a fraction. So this one is rational. When you do the square root of a fraction, you just take the square root of the numerator and denominator. So square root of 16 is four, square root of 49 is seven. And so this is a fraction, it is rational. Square root of 10, if I try and ask myself, what times what equals 10, I won't be able to think of an answer. Um, and so if you type square root of 10 into um, a calculator, what you'll see is a long decimal number that has no pattern to it. I'm gonna type my, it into my calculator right now to see what you get. Um, on a calculator, this decimal number actually doesn't stop. It doesn't repeat. There's no pattern. Zero, seven, and then you just eventually run out of room, but it does keep going off to infinity. So this cannot be written as a fraction. Um, and so it's not rational. We call it irrational. Square root of 0 0.81. It's best if we write this as a fraction so that we can evaluate it. So because there's two numbers after the decimal place, we write two zeros in our fraction. So it's 81 hundredths. And then I'm going to do the square root of 81, which is 9, and the square root of 100, which is 10. And this is a fraction, so this is rational. Okay, last one and the hardest one. Upon immediate inspection here, it doesn't look like we can take the square root of 50 or 72. So you might think this is irrational, but we can reduce this fraction. If we divide the numerator and denominator by 2, it's an equivalent fraction. And then actually you'll discover that you can take the square root of the numerator and denominator. So you'll get 5 over 6, which is a fraction, so this is rational. So every single number on this list, square root 9, square root of 16 over 49, square root of 0 0.81, and square root of 50 over 72, those are all rational. The only irrational number here is square root of 10. Um, we cannot write that number as a fraction, and so um, we call it irrational. Um, another famous, just as a quick aside, another famous irrational number that we all probably have heard of is pi, of course, and pi is a number that repeats, uh, or sorry, that does not repeat, has no repeating pattern, 3.14, one, five, nine, I can't remember the rest of the decimals, but um, there are people who remember thousands of them in competitions. Uh, but yeah, it doesn't repeat, doesn't have any pattern, um, cannot be written as a fraction. Um, yeah, so that is the end of the lesson.